Hi everybody, it's Marcy, and if you can't tell by the papers, I'm still working on my Halloween journal, and today I'm going to make a little piece of ephemera that I saw Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodah make for her mask making stuff, and then I saw a an envelope booklet that Pam at the Paper Outpost made. Now mine, I'm I'm more closely following what Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodah did. That <laughs> that's kind of funny. Sh Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodah did. Okay, but I'm also changing it a bit. So I've got a. I don't know the number size, but it's basically a business envelope. It's just really bright orange. And it is... Nine and a half, roughly by four and a quarter. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come under this flap and it actually might be easier to do it this way, but I'm going to come under this flap and just glue the flap closed. Don't need the inside of the envelope for anything. Then, and this is where I differ from Tina, she folded hers this way. I'm actually going to fold mine back so that my flap is on this side. The reason being, the flap still has some gummy stuff on it. And rather than messing with cleaning it all off, I'm just going to fold it so that the gumminess gets covered with paper. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this paper to cover just the flap. And so I'm going to Put my glue down, and I'm just going to glue the, as opposed to trying to cut my paper to match the flap, I am just going to put my uncut paper down, and then I will cut the excess paper away. Okay, excess paper away. Now I'm going to, okay, my flap will go this way. I'm going to cover this with this paper. So again, I will speed up the speed so you don't have to watch me do this.
So I've got my paper glued down. As you saw, I had to go back and add a little extra. Still need a little extra right there on that corner. I always seem to have either not quite enough glue or way too much glue. Okay. So now that's what we've got. So now what I'm going to do is grab my bone folder. I'm going to fold this in thirds, roughly thirds. I just want to make a little booklet. And I can see I've got little gaps there, so after I get this all folded down, I might need to uh, add a little more glue. And if you're not me and not doing this on camera, you might want to give your glue a chance to dry before you start folding it. Okay. And I'm using a, this is like a 32 pound paper. The, I, I would just use a standard copy weight, like a 20 pound paper for this. Mine's getting a little bulky because the paper I have this stuff printed on is a heavier weight paper. But that that's fine. Okay, so now we've got our folds. So I'm going to come back in and I'm just going to glue, put a little glue on the sides. And I think I'm going to run some right across the bottom. Just to help hold that. We could have done this before we did the folding, but I didn't. Okay, so now... We've got a cute little booklet with pockets in it, but I want to cover my insides, so I'm going to use some coffee dyed paper Okay, so I got all my little papers 
glued in so you've got three panels for writing space and the next thing I'm going to do before I continue decorating this is I actually want to put a seam up the two fold lines. Um, a, it will make these three separate pockets, and B, it'll just be a little added touch. So I will be right back. Okay, after a minor disagreement between the sewing machine and myself, I stitched up the fold lines, and not only did that help close off the pockets, but it also helped keep the paper here from bending or buckling where uh, the envelope was. So, now I want to, I think first I want to start with my insides and I'm just gonna got these recollections Halloween stamps and I'm just gonna use a couple of those stamps Now, I want to, I've got, I printed out in a smaller size some of Dear Julie Julie's Halloween Digital Kit, and that kit is a collection of antique Halloween postcards, and I've just printed them at a smaller size, and I on this one, I love this one. I'm trying to see the larger print one. Let me show you this. In I love that this is the one I'm using. And it says, Bromo Seltzer Tower Building at Night. Northeast corner of Utah and Lombard Streets, Baltimore, Maryland. But as you can see, it's got, you know, the cloudy, almost greenish cast to the sky with a little bit of a moon. So it just gives it kind of, even though it's just a building, an image of a building, it does give it kind of a spooky feel to it. And I love that. So I'm going to take my spooky stamp. I don't. Let's see if I can, let me, I don't have any, magazines or anything over here, I'll just stack up some papers. I want to have a little padding under what I'm stamping. Okay. So I'm just going to stamp spooky on here. I'm not sure how well it'll show, and I don't want to cover... Oh, that's kind of cute. Okay, so it's tilted, but that's kind of cute. All right. So I'm going to put that in there along with, uh, okay, the two kits I'm using in this are the Dear Do Julie Julie Halloween kit, Halloween postcard kit, and Artie Mays Halloween Oddments. And this is one of the little tickets. It's Ashes of the Crow. 
So we'll put that in there with that. Then on the back side, I think we'll just put this little postcard. Got the witch, the keyhole with the witch and moon, and the little child, a black cat. And we'll just stick that back there. And then over here, we have this postcard. It says, Halloween. Put on a witch's cloak and hat and gently stroke this old black cat. Then watch the candles, flickering flame, and may it spell your true love's name. So, I think we'll put that one right in there with... Do I have another little Artie Mays ticket? I know I do. Oh, I'll use this one. I uh, need to ink it up a little bit. And this one is Eyeball Extract. And we'll just put that one right in there with that. Then the only other thing I'm going to... do to this. I wonder. I say that and then I... Sorry for the reaching across. Let's try it. This is a stamp that I had picked up at Goodwill and I've never even used it. So I'm not sure. Do I have a piece of scrap paper over here somewhere that I can try it on first? Work. Okay. So we'll just somewhat center that. And now we have a happy Halloween there. Okay. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do to this is tie some baker's twine around it. First, I'm going to cover up my archival ink so it doesn't dry out. And I cut a length of baker's twine. strand there I really do stink at doing this but I just want a 
cute little closure for it. Okay. That'll work. Okay, a little bit off of that. And that'll work. So there it is. Very simply, just a simple ephemera piece with little things to look at and a little bit of journaling space using an envelope. So that's it for now, guys. Until I see you again, please be safe, stay healthy, happy crafting, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.